My name is Jeff Schill. I'm the executive trainer, training, uh, executive director of trading here at CPI. And uh, today we are going to be discussing some of our new offerings that we have coming out here uh, at CPI. Um, so the agenda for today is I'm going to go through a short presentation to explain some of those offerings and options that you have available to you. Um, and then we'll open it up for a question and answer session. I have my colleague Nikki Morawski here who's going to be monitoring questions from online that you can type in the, the box, the chat box. And I also have Karen Bradley, our product manager, who is going to help me out with some of those questions that, that you may have. So why don't we just jump right in and I'll start by explaining some of those new offerings that we are coming out with. So as certified instructors of nonviolent crisis intervention, you are authorized to teach a suite of offerings that we are coming out with. These offerings are structured ways to present content to meet various needs within your organization. We're going to start down with the, the largest box there on the bottom um, because we recognize the importance of all staff within your organization having a basic understanding of crisis situations and a common language with which to speak about those in your care. Our Prevention First offering is an online awareness program that will make it easy for you to get the core concepts of this program to all of your staff members no matter the area of risk in which they work. Building off of that Prevention First program, we also recognize that you may have staff who encounter more substantial behaviors and could benefit from increased verbal de-escalation skills. They may not be in high-risk areas or have specific need for physical interventions, but their work responsibilities require them to manage medium-level crisis situations. We have designed our verbal intervention program to be an easy way to present and practice verbal de-escalation strategies with your staff. This program is a blended offering that will help to maximize learning and time away from, from those that we serve. The next program offering that we have is our nonviolent crisis intervention. And this training option looks at the full spectrum of a crisis and provides staff with a full range of intervention strategies to de-escalate or safely intervene to a crisis. It focuses on preventative strategies and decision-making skills in a crisis, along with physical intervention strategies to manage those high-risk and potentially dangerous situations. This program also discusses ways that staff can restore relationships with individuals after a crisis and develop strategies to prevent behaviors from occurring again. The final offering on our pyramid is our advanced program. Some of your staff may require even more advanced strategies to manage those complex situations in the highest risk areas of your facility. Therefore, we do offer our advanced program to assist with these types of behaviors. It does require an additional certification above your nonviolent crisis intervention certification. So today we want to really focus our discussion on the verbal intervention program, which is our latest offering. The verbal intervention program is customized and available for healthcare markets at the moment. We are working on education and human service additions that should be ready by the spring of 2020. Some of the benefits of this verbal intervention program that we want to make you aware of is first simplifying language for easy, or easier learning. We looked at the language of our program to say, how can we make, make it easier for the learner to understand? So we have simplified certain things, like for example, the proxemics, we have simplified to be just personal space to help with the learning. We have also combined modules for chunking of learning. So for example, our nonverbal, paraverbal, and verbal sections have been combined into one module that we call communication. We have also added in this program competency activities to help staff transfer the learning to the workplace. And we've also provided resources for you as an instructor to make assessing and measuring competency in, the, in this classroom as easy as possible. We have put an upfront focus on the integrated experience and staff responses so we can really focus on what is in our control and the impact that we as staff have on a crisis situation. 
There's also additional emphasis on content in this program. We have uh, looked at fail-safe choices, which are really ways to set limits while providing positive outlets. We also have a section on delivering bad news because we recognize that this is something that's very common in our fields and delivering bad news can often trigger anxiety or to start crisis behaviors. And we also have a section on safety strategies. These are non-restrictive ways to manage a situation when the behavior becomes risky, such as managing the environment or bringing in and utilizing a team. And finally, the verbal intervention program ends with an action plan. All participants who go through this program uh, look to analyze what they've learned in the program and design a specific plan of action that they can take with them when they leave the program and go back to their workplace. The verbal intervention program has been designed uh, to have six modules, uh, starting where we always do with the crisis development model. This is our framework and our foundation for our course that we will follow all the way through the verbal intervention program. Module two highlights the integrated experience. I talked about that um, upfront focus on staff responses and the impact that we have in a crisis situation. Module three focuses on those communication skills of nonverbal, paraverbal, and verbal, and how they can be used in a crisis situation to de-escalate an individual. Module four focuses on our verbal intervention skills, such as setting limits. Module five is safety strategies, or those non-restrictive ways to manage risky situations. We do have an optional module, which is the disengagement. And then we end the program with our post-crisis uh, responsibilities. The verbal intervention program is a blended learning offering, which means that it does have an online portion and then they come to the classroom portion. The online is designed to give everybody that knowledge base, uh, to learn the content and learn the material. It provides a consistent way to get knowledge and skills out to your staff. The classroom then, when they come to that session with you as an instructor, you are really now uh, able to focus on the application of that knowledge, practice of those skills, and the relevancy of how to use those skills in the workplace. So that is really how the outline of our verbal intervention program. And I think we can now open it up for any questions that you may have around any of our suite of, suite of offerings that we talked about today. So we have Nikki again, who's moderating some questions. Feel free to type any of those into the chat box. And I'm already seeing some in that chat box, right, Nikki? Yep, absolutely. Um, we have a question from Denise. She asked, do participants receive a certificate in verbal de-escalation? Yes, I think you're talking about our verbal intervention program there, Denise, and that is a great point that our verbal intervention program, our nonviolent crisis intervention, and our advanced program are all formal trainings that individuals receive a blue card and a certificate of completion. It is just the prevention first, which is an online awareness program that is not a blue card or formal training. So that would not get the certificate of completion or the blue card. We have another question. When you say it's customizable for different areas, does that mean the content is different? The content itself is obviously going to be the same around our, our programs, but what I mean by the customizable is that the videos, the examples, how it's portrayed is designed to be more relatable to your workplace. So in the past, we've often had some general types of scenarios or situations. Um, this is really designed where we're going to have a healthcare focus, an education focus, and a human service focus. So all of the videos, the examples will be geared to that specific field and customized to that field. Jackie would like you to speak to um, what the verbal intervention program looks like uh, as opposed to the prevention first training. Perfect, yeah. The uh, prevention first is 
uh, an awareness program that gives all of your staff just kind of a high level overview of some of the concepts that you're familiar with. Um, it's online, it has a series of videos that, that individuals watch, um, and it creates a common language and that gets them familiar with some of the terms and concepts of this program. The verbal intervention program uh, is designed and then have some more classroom work where it focuses on the application, use of skills, practice of using skills, um, and really focusing on how to use those intervention skills in a, a crisis situation. So that's the main difference between the two. The Prevention First is an awareness program. The Verbal Intervention dives deeper into the skill set, into developing the skills and knowledge to be able to de-escalate a crisis situation. Um, great. Nicole would like to know, um, she says her organization has a surge learning online tool for training. Would it be possible for the prevention first to interface with surge? We would certainly look in, into that. I, I have to be honest, I'm not familiar with surge, but um, we would certainly look at saying if you're already utilizing a system, how we could work with you. Um, we would just connect you with uh, some of the people here within our IT team uh, who could help uh, assist if that's feasible or not. But I know we utilize HealthStream and different types of systems, so I think we would be able to work with you. Another question, what is the cost breakdown of the verbal intervention program versus the full blue card program? Mm -hmm. The verbal intervention and the nonviolent crisis intervention, since they're both uh, uh, blue card programs, are going to come at a similar price point. Great. Um, as an NCI instructor, do I need to recertify? Um, do I need to certify in verbal intervention in order to teach it? Another great question that I can't believe I didn't mention in my presentation, but no, you do not. It, it, on that uh, uh, pyramid, you can teach um, any of the programs underneath your certification. So if you are nonviolent crisis certified, you are right now authorized to teach our verbal intervention and even the prevention first program. You're just not allowed to teach up on the, the pyramid, but you can certainly teach anything underneath your certification and you do not need to come back through another authorization. Could verbal intervention training be used as a renewal for nonviolent crisis intervention training? Um, and not really as a, a renewal for that because, again, it's a, a different skill set that is focusing on the verbal intervention where nonviolent crisis intervention is going to have the um, holding and disengagement skills to it. So it would be a, a different authorization. Now, you may find that there are staff members who don't need the full nonviolent crisis intervention authorization, and therefore verbal intervention would be a perfect fit for them. But it would be two different blue cards or two different authorizations, uh, depending on the need. But if you have staff who are nonviolent crisis intervention authorized and they do not use the physicals or the expectation is that they do not use disengagement or holding, I would say a verbal intervention would be a perfect fit or program for them. Jackie is looking to provide training to non-clinical staff who work on a high-risk unit that until now, uh, they've been in the same training, uh, nonviolent crisis intervention, but don't feel they need the same level of training as they do not have the same interface with staff. What would you suggest? So non-clinical staff um, who don't need the same level. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a great question. Uh, Jackie, because that's the whole reason why we created this suite of offerings. So that way you could find what is the best fit for specific individuals. Um, that may be uh, the people, main staff are not clinical, maybe different departments of your, your hospital or your organization. We recognize that not everyone needs the same one uh, size fits all training. So we created a whole suite of offerings. Um, I think we would need to have some further conversations around how your organization looks to see the specific fit for each department or each individual. But that's certainly something that if you contacted your representative here at uh, CPI, uh, we do have some, some um, resources that can help you look specifically at which individuals might fit into which of these offerings and categories. What's the time? What what is the time for CPI verbal intervention training online and classroom portions? 
The online portion for verbal intervention takes about one hour to complete. Um, and then the classroom portion is anywhere from two and a half to four hours, depending if you'd use that optional module of disengagement. So if you do not teach disengagement, it would be about a two and a half hour class that again focuses on application, practice, relevancy. Um, if you do add the disengagement, it's about an hour to an hour and a half. So you're looking at about a four hour classroom portion. Excellent. So is there a workbook and a trainer book for verbal intervention like there is for the nonviolent crisis intervention course? Absolutely. Uh, you have access to both of those as nonviolent crisis intervention instructors. Uh, the instructor guide is um, online and I believe because you got a, an invite to this that you have already been set up in your account to have those uh, verbal intervention material in your account online. Um, and then you can certainly order those workbooks just like you would order any other workbook. Can we receive a link to the online course so we can see what it's like? Uh, I'm just going to ask Karen, our product manager, that link should also be in there as well, correct? Under their account, is that what they signed up for? As a certified instructor, they have access to the preview in, my, in, um, in the LMS under cpilearning.com. Um, if they are not a certified instructor at this moment, they should contact their sales representative and that person will be able to get them access. Perfect. So, uh, yes, it, you should have access to that if you're a certified instructor in your LMS. And if not, we can certainly make sure that you have access to that preview. How soon will the books and supplies be available for the verbal de-escalation? The verbal intervention workbooks and material are out right now. So you have access to, again, that instructor guide online and the workbooks are available for you. I should say for healthcare, workbooks and material are available for healthcare. Um, the education and human service ones are coming this, this uh, spring. Great, thanks, Jeff. Are the workbooks included with the online module as they are with the flex for nonviolent crisis intervention or a separate cost? Yep, no, it works the same way. It would be one bundled cost that gives you the seat to the online portion as well as the workbook for the classroom portion. It's all, all uh, bundled together. Great, um, can you talk a little bit about what it looks like to add the disengagement portion to verbal intervention? Yeah, it, it's really um, kind of as it sounds, it's an it's an optional module. So it would be covering the de-escalation topics first, and then you would um, you know, cover the disengagement at the end of the program. Um, and then I would recommend doing some sort of wrap up at the end that kind of brings it all together. But it, it is really just kind of an optional module that would be put at the end of the verbal de-escalation modules. Um, what about delivering bad news? Can you tell us a little bit more about what that looks like? Yep, uh, great question. That um, This is something that actually came from all of our certified instructors. As we did surveys, that this was a topic that was at the top of the list of, of areas that people felt should be in the program or addressed within the program. Um, and delivering bad news can take a variety of, of different uh, forms, but it, it could be from um, things have changed and you can't leave today to your doctor's running late to um, we need you to take medication. It could be any number of things. Um, and we do know that delivering that, that potentially news that could be perceived as bad can end up escalating an individual. It can at the very least cause anxiety, if not escalate them further. So we have uh, looked at a series of steps and a script that an individual can go through uh, that can help them in the way that they present some of that news to an individual. Um, and we can also start to map out possible avenues or responses based on an individual. All right, Patty would like to know what she would need to do to, I believe she's referring to uh, the advanced, the high risk level advanced program. What would she need to do to become an instructor if she's already an NCI instructor? 
if you're already an MCI instructor and you're looking uh, that you need more, you need that advanced, uh, that I would recommend as a great uh, renewal course for you. And you can find all of our courses and locations on our website. Uh, you can just see where we're offering that and um, enroll in that, that class. And then you do get that certification. Or you could talk, contact your sales representative and they could certainly let you know as well the best uh, places or opportunities to get into that program to get that certification. Is there a syllabus for verbal intervention online, Jeff? There is an agenda, I believe, online. I'm going to go to Karen again, our product manager. Yeah, there's a course outline that is in the uh, instructor guide, in the instructor manual. It's generally uh, it, within the first 20 pages or so, and that will tell you how much time will be dedicated to each one of the topics. Thank you, Karen. I'm just not sure if you could hear her, so I'll repeat it, that it is in the instructor guide. So again, under your account, you have access to that instructor guide, and it'll be in the first few pages. We'll give you a course outline. Great. Um, a strength of current CPI offerings is the interactive learning environment. Uh, does this new verbal intervention curriculum continue with this teaching style? It, absolutely, um, the interactive approach. And I, I think oftentimes with even some of the, these programs, it's maximized even more uh, because we recognize that just learning the knowledge is only a portion of it. it it's actually interacting with that content, practicing that content, um, and getting comfortable with it is, is the important aspect. So that is certainly highlighted in all of our programs, and I would say it's really maximized in that verbal intervention program through the blended offering. Uh, blended teaching allows for the content to be online and then that real focus on that interactive application in the classroom. Great, kind of a follow-up question to that. If I've already been previously certified as advanced physical, am I able to teach at the highest level? Yep, great question. Again, you can teach anything underneath. So if you have a current advanced physical certification, then you are allowed to teach any of those offerings underneath that. Yep. Great. Um, looks like I don't have any more questions at this time. Everybody, if you um, have any more questions, now would be the time to type them into the Q&A um, for me to ask Jeff. And we are always available um, at, uh, at our headquarters here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, you should all be familiar with that. Uh, 800 number, 877-877-5390. That number again, 877-877-5390. All right, it doesn't look like we have any more questions um, and we did want to keep this somewhat brief. So again, thank you very much for being a little patient with us as we work through some of those technical issues at the beginning. Um, hopefully we were able to introduce some of these concepts and offerings for you. If you have any more questions, uh, feel free, like Nikki said, to contact the office or to uh, uh, contact your sales representative. Is there a last minute question that came in, Karen? Yes. Okay, one last minute question. Getting in just under the wire. Just under the wire. How long does the online portion typically take? Uh, the online portion takes about one hour. One. one last one. Um, do you know what the bundle cost per student will be for the online and classroom CPI VI? Repeat that one again. The cost for the the bundle cost per student for VI verbal intervention. Um, I it's going to vary depending on the number of, of seats and students that you're looking to. Um, to train. So that is something that I am going to uh, pass over to again our sales representative who could walk you through what is your training plan, how many people are you planning to train, and we would look to make it as cost effective as possible for you. Great. It looks like well, that's all the questions that we have. All right. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you joining us today. Contact the office or your sales representative if you have any other questions.